If you have an FDM 3D printer, you've probably used OctoPrint to manage it. OctoPrint is commonly run on a Raspberry Pi using the OctoPi distribution. The Raspberry Pi can sit next to the printer and connect directly to its USB port, uh, any cameras you might have, and any I.O. such as lights or power. All of this is great, but the Raspberry Pi relies on an SD card for storage, which is not the most reliable. Anything we can do to reduce writing to the SD card will help prolong its life, and at the same time, keeping data off the SD card in the first place makes it easier to access and backup. In this video, I'm going to show you how to set up remote storage mounts on OctoPi using Samba network sharing, and how this setup has worked for me for the past few months. Starting with a fresh OctoPi image, I've already flashed the image on the SD card, booted up the Pi, and run through the OctoPrint configuration wizard. Other than that, I've done absolutely nothing to configure the OctoPrint instance or the Raspberry Pi. The only software we need to install in this case is AutoFS. AutoFS is a tool that automatically mounts network shares as they are needed instead of by using the Linux FSTAB file. So first we're going to run apt update just to make sure all of our repositories are up to date. In this case, OctoPi is using an older version of uh, Debian Buster instead of the newer Bullseye because OctoPi hasn't been released in about a year. That's fine, we just have to acknowledge that we're changing from the latest stable to the previous stable release, which is what it's asking us to do. Okay, now it's done. Now we can install AutoFS. Okay, that's done. So now let's make sure it's running. And it is. And the install should have set it to run as default, but we'll just make sure it did anyway. Okay, that's it. Now AutoFS is installed. So once we've installed AutoFS, we need to configure the mount points. First, we need to edit the master share file and tell it to point to a new share file that we're going to create soon. So let's edit the master file. So this is the master file. So this points to other files which include shares in them. So we're going to add a line at the bottom of this file that points to a new share file and tells it to mount it at, at slash so that any shares within our new share file will get mounted here. And the new share file is going to be called etsy auto.smb.shares. And we're going to set a timeout of 15. And the other attribute is browse. So that's all we have to do to this file. So now we can save it. Save, yes. Now we need to create that auto.smb.shares file that we told the master file existed. So here, each line of this is a share, and it contains the attributes of that share. So let's create a mount at mount printer, and the attributes we want are that it's a CIFS file system, read write, uh, we have a user, And we're also going to tell it that any user on the local system has full permissions. And this is okay because with Samba sharing, the server validates permissions as well. So if any user on the local system can only access what the server allows it to. And I've set up TrueNAS so that this user pathfinder only has access to this one folder that I'm mounting. And then finally, we need to tell it what the path is to our server. So in this case, that's the IP address of my, my TrueNAS server. And that's the folder that I gave it access to in TrueNAS. Now, if you have a different NAS, you can set up your folder permissions however you'd like. Now we're going to save this file. Now we need to create that mount point that we pointed to. And that way, AutoFS will have a folder to mount to. Now we can restart AutoFS. Then we should be able to check and see if it's running. And it is, no errors. So now we're going to create a new directory in that location just to make sure that it works.
So now it's there on our system, but what happens if we go over to Windows? What do we see there? Look, got a folder. It's empty. But it's there. So now we know that we're successfully mounting the network share on the Raspberry Pi and we have access to it. So now that we've got our network mount set up, we need to decide which Octoprint folders we want to move to the network share. So in the Octoprint settings, we have the option of these five folders. Each of them has a bit of a quirk to it, and there's reasons you may or may not want to migrate each of these. So the time lapse and the time lapse temp folder are both pretty good candidates to move to the network. Both of them create large files. Um, which would not be good to keep on our SD card. And the time-lapse folder contains files that we'd really like to copy off. So if they're already on our network share, we can, we can work on them in a video editor or something without having to download them through the UI. Uh, the uploads folder is a folder that we really should not touch because Octoprint will scan files when you upload them and put them in the uploads folder. But if you just drop them directly into the uploads folder, it won't scan them. So you can put this on the network share if you want to back it up or if you want it to be backed up by your NAS but you shouldn't touch it. The logs folder is also a bit tricky because if you have any issues with the network share, then logs won't create it at all. So I don't back up the logs folder. I leave it on the Raspberry Pi. And the final folder is the watched folder. And this one you should absolutely move to your network share because Octoprint will scan this folder and automatically treat them as new uploads. So you can drop the file onto your NAS and then have Octoprint automatically scan and move it to the uploads folder. I also check the actively pull the watched folder button. It works better for network shares for me. Now, in addition to these locations, there's a couple other locations you might want to back up as well. So the backup folder where Octoprint stores its backup zip files can also be network mounted. And then every time you take a backup here and backup and restore, the backup file will show up on your NAS and then your NAS can back it up instead of the SD card. So it's a much safer place to keep your backups. And the last one is if you use Octolapse, Octolapse has its own folders where it keeps temporary files. And I won't go that into that in this video, um, but if you read the blog post in the description, I have some additional notes on using Octolapse with this setup. So Octoprint has features to relocate certain folders to different locations, but it doesn't allow relocation of the backup folder and it doesn't allow relocation of plugin folders such as Octolapse. So for this reason, I'm gonna leave all of the folders where they are and create symbolic links between the expected location and the new location on the network mount point. So before I start, I'm going to stop the Octoprint server so it doesn't mess anything up. Now first I'm going to do the backup folder. And so the backup folder is located in slash dot Octoprint slash data. So we can see there's a folder here called backup and it's a regular folder. That's the folder that's already here. So now we're going to make a new folder on the network share called backup and that's going to replace this one. And then we're going to remove the existing backup folder which would delete all of your backups if you'd already been using Octoprint for a while. So if you've been using Octoprint for a while, you're going to want to make sure you copy the data that you need out of these folders before you delete them because we're going to delete them and then link link their location to the new network mount. So I'm going to delete the backup folder and then create a link to the new backup folder. So now if I list the directory, it'll show me that it's a link. So here you can see the backup folders here and it's light blue and it's actually a link to mount, oops, it's actually a link to mount printer backup. And, um, but it's here, it has full permissions for user Pi. So now I'm going to restart uh, Octoprint and then we're going to see what it looks like in there. And the same process would work for any of the other folders. Um, I have specific commands on the website if you want to, if you want to read through those. So this process works for any of the other folders I mentioned earlier. Uh, some of them have different quirks and if you read my website I have um, exact commands for each folder if you want to copy and paste those. If you're using Octolapse, Octolapse has its own folder structure and its own temporary location you have to store. If you're using the built-in time-lapse, the time-lapse temp folder has to be created within the time-lapse folder, so make sure you make that directory with make dear. Um, that's basically it. So now we're waiting for Octoprint to start up and then we can uh, see what it looks like from that end. 
So Octoprint is back, so if we switch over to the Windows view, we can see that we have an empty folder called Backup now. And if we switch to Octoprint, we're going to do a backup, and we're going to see that it ends up on our network share. If we scroll down to Backup, and we're going to exclude uh, time lapses and, and upload files. So now we've successfully created a backup, and it created it with that name. If we switch back over to Windows, there's our backup right there. So now every time you click out the backup button in Octoprint, or if you use the auto backup plugin, instead of saving it on your SD card, it's going to save it on your network drive, which will make it a lot easier to restore when your SD card fails. So I created this setup on a new Raspberry Pi just for this video, but I have two other Raspberry Pis running my two 3D printers, and both of them have been running this setup for a few months without issues. One of them uses Octolapse, and the other one uses the regular built-in time lapse, and both of them work perfectly fine. Uh, all the time lapses get saved to my network drive, all the backups get saved to my network drive, and I can drop G code directly onto the watch folder on my network drive. Because I've mounted the network drive on the Raspberry Pi instead of setting up a Samba share on the Raspberry Pi, I can use the file permissions in TrueNAS to set access, who has access to the printer folders, who can edit the time lapses, and things like that. And in addition, I don't have to mount another drive letter in Windows. So on Windows, I just have to mount my drive letter for my, my data store in TrueNAS, and I can have access to all of the printer's folders from that, that one file hierarchy. So for me, it's a very useful setup for keeping my uh, Octoprint data off of the SD card, reducing wear on the SD card, and also making it a lot easier to access and a lot more easy to back up. So thanks for watching. Bye.